So look who I have here. I can't see because the Cause Christmas the glare. The glare. He's so he's glaring so much. That well, I'm glowing. Who is who do I have here? Marco Ramondo with Washmark.com. So Marco, you was a you was a police officer, right? Did you get to eat lots of donuts back then? No, nah, Texas is all kolaches. Oh, is that what it is? Okay, because I'm with the fireman, so you know the fireman and the cop. You always have the the palm. Yeah, I, I, I know. So. Cops are made some firefighters got heroes. Well, yeah, you know, you, and we got to, somebody's got to stay in the recliner and keep it warm, so, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, what do you do now? So, what I do is I manufacture power washing equipment. That's uh, the main That's the main focus we do. We actually build the skids, we build the machines. We still sell Pressure Pro uh, with, with Milfis, uh, but that's just whenever we're having supply issues, they're kind of like a, well, we still have something available for you. But so you build the whole skid slide in, correct? So the no, actually, I have another company to build the actual okay. frames. We build the machines, All like right. the, the hot water. This we built. Now this trailer we actually manufactured entirely. We we actually make the entire trailer, and we're okay. registered with WMI to, to assign VIN numbers. So oh, so you actually build the whole trailer? Yes, we okay. we can fabricate the entire trailer. So um, where are you all located out of? Houston, Texas. Kima, Texas, which is a suburb of Houston. Houston, Texas. Awesome. Yep. So if you're in that area, you definitely get looking for a trailer. What is, what is something for a new guy that you might give some information to help him start out and get growing? Just because you got a $3,000 job cleaning a parking lot that you did in two days doesn't mean you're ready to quit your full-time job. You're not ready to quit your full-time job until you can't afford to have your full-time job. Awesome. Now, I know this is a big transparent thing, but is it if I have about $5,000, $10,000, what are some things I could do with that to grow either a business? Should I go buy $10,000 worth of equipment or should I look at marketing or what are some things that I should do? It's really a mixture. I mean, it also depends on your equipment. If you have a $10,000 budget, you don't want to spend all 10000 of it on just equipment, but you also don't want to spend ten thousand on just marketing, and you also don't just want to do one set of marketing. It need, you need to have eggs in a lot of different baskets, because that's how you get a lot of customers. And I know you've been hitting on a lot of marketing stuff, and that's why I was hitting yep. on that too. So, what what is some what's some things that um, what are what are some fears that you have to overcome to be able to do pressure washing business? Um, let's see. I never got over my fear of heights, um, but so, so I just kind of dealt with that one. Uh, <laughs> How did you deal with that? Man, I just get up there and your knees start shaking. Yes. Like that. <laughs> yeah. I, I just. I don't know. I just. I just. I was like, whatever. I'm, I need. I need. I need to pay the bills. Right. Yeah, right. That's, that's right. basically it. Uh, man. I mean, which. Which. Where, where, where do I start? Are you talking about struggles? Yeah. This kind of struggles. I'll tell you. Whatever. My biggest struggle is whenever I first started, I was mostly just doing residential cleaning. And whenever November hit, I was getting no sales. And I was like, oh man. I thought, because I was used to making, you know, my first year, I was used to making two to $4,000 consistently a month. It right. wasn't a lot, it was just my weekend money. And uh, then November hits, and it's like I made $720 in that in the first November. And I go, whoa. So I got on LinkedIn. And I just started looking for people that I wanted to make my customers. And then that's where LinkedIn got me into fleet washing. The truck washing is where I actually made a significant amount of money to actually build my store. So that's something that I'm a big proponent of. Also, Marco's a big proponent of LinkedIn. Both of us, I've, that's one that I push a lot. It made me a lot of money. And a lot of people don't money. understand it. Like, well, I tried it, it didn't work. I'm like, did you just get on for like a week? And then just, that was it. And of course it's not gonna work. And, and that's with any marketing. If we're not taking action, it doesn't matter, right? And, and I've been pushing the whole taking massive action, you know? And LinkedIn is one of those things. It's not one of those things we get on one day and we If you have going. one hour to waste on Facebook, you have one hour to waste on LinkedIn. For every hour you spend on Facebook, you need to spend that amount of time on LinkedIn. And not just being a, 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 not just being a leader, but you also need to be a follower. You need to know who to follow the right people because whenever you're following the right people, that's also branding your business. And, and LinkedIn is a lot of time is a networking market. Yes. It's not a spam market. No. It isn't, you know, go it's all that. Re-engagement is my best thing on there. Let's say I had a customer I dealt with four years ago, but I've completely lost touch with him. He works at a different company now, but he still has the same title, which means he's still the decision maker for my cleaning business. Right. Well, now I have access to a new company. And then what he's going to do, he's going to give me the information to the guy that took his place at the old company. And now I have the potential of having two commercial contracts. Yep. I love LinkedIn. LinkedIn has made us a lot of money. I know it's made you a lot of Data money. Data mining tool. Love it. <laughs>
And so um, any words of advice for a new person or even a person that needs to get over to, maybe they're at that $100,000 mark and they need to get over that next level. Okay, I was really OCD and needed my jobs to be my 99% clean. You have to be okay with your employees being 80% as good as you. As long as you're able to let that go and accept the fact they're not gonna be as good as you, but they can at least be close, then you're gonna be able to grow. If you don't ever do that, then you just stay at the hundred to $200,000 income, which for some people that's absolutely great. But if you wanna expand your business and not have to be on the pressure washing lands in your 50s, you have to get employees and get systems in place. Systems are everything. That right there is gold. Because yeah, systems, and it's not got to be 100% clean, yeah. right? And something is better than nothing at the end of the day. And that's even whether we're working on- I Quit worrying about competitors. Oh, what, what? You mean competitors? What's, you don't have competitors, competitor. you, have, you, have, you have customers. Right. You know what I mean? You understand what I'm saying? I know exactly what you're saying. If I get a large job and there's a guy that's out there doing work for cheap and he's also doing a good job, that's not my biggest threat. I'm thinking to myself, if I sell a job for $1,000, he's absolutely going to do it for $600 and then he's actually turning into my customer because he's making me money and I'm not even have to do the work whenever I'm overloaded with work instead of me having to hire another person. Get it? Yep, absolutely. Yep. One other thing, training, coming to the huge because that's where we're at right now. We're at the huge booth and all that kind of thing. What, what's your thought on that? Is that something that, is it worth the investment into yourself? So I actually went to the huge the first time was a 2017 before I was even a store and I was amazed at the amount of information that was out there. Um, I took a, a lot of different marketing classes and I got to learn a lot of strategies because I'm, I'm a very out of the box type person. But I took some of these classes and they helped bridge some of these gaps and things. I'm like, oh, my God. oh didn't even think about that. Oh, didn't even think about that. Uh, it makes me so much more money knowing this stuff. When I, when I think I was paying like $300 for a ticket, it was nothing. And that's what I always say, if I can 10X whatever I go to, yeah, so yeah. like the huge, you know, you're gonna pay $300 ticket, you're gonna have, you know, your hotel, your food and all that, you might be $1,000. If I can make 10 grand off of that, and one little thing, one little nugget out of here can help. So, so networking at these events, the reason why I like these events where you network and people don't understand the value of networking is me and Andrew, we're probably not going to get with somebody that is in our five mile radius and teach him about how we run our business. But I'm not worried about sharing what I do with a guy in Portland, Oregon. Right. And vice versa. Right. You know, if you're just networking in Houston, you're dealing with people that you're bidding against on jobs, so you don't want them to know everything that you know. But you can learn a lot from these other contractors. And sometimes, I've actually met guys in these events where someone on LinkedIn will say, hey, I have a division in Mobile, Alabama. Do you know anybody? Yes, yep. I do, I have a guy. It's like, I, I, and I have so, I always have a guy, so now this company finds me more valuable because now I'm like their own B. Don't be in BNI, be BNI. You right. need to be your own connector. You need to connect people. Awesome. If you people, you always get jobs. Great advice. Thank you, man. Yes, sir.